Hello, good afternoon. Welcome back to our introductions to English linguistics class. Today, I would like to continue the discussions to the next branch of linguistics, which is called as psycholinguistics. With me, Pa Afif, so we would like to define what is called as psycholinguistics. So, psycholinguistics, previously called as psychology of language, is study of interrelations between linguistic factors and psychological aspects. Some other scientists believe that uh, psycholinguistics is scientific study of language in relations with mind and brain. So, there is a correlation between uh, the conditions of the brain and also the human language productions. So, the field is concerned with psychological and neuro biological factor that enable humans to acquire, use, comprehend, and purchase the language. So, psycholinguistic is not an individual discipline, but it is interdisciplinary field because to understand how someone's equal language, it means that we have also to consider their social factors. So, we study also social linguistics. When we also try to understand someone's uh, how they comprehend language, we also uh, connect it with another branch of language like language skills, also discourse analysis and other things. So there are four areas that are discussed in psycholinguistics. The first is how children acquire the language. The second, how do people comprehend the language. The third, how do people produce the language. And the fourth one, how if someone's already know one language, how can they get this, the next language. And it is not only uh, taking a point of view of someone to understand more than one language, but also in the point of view of teacher, how to teach the second language or the foreign language to uh, students. So this discipline is very important. It's not only for a uh, learner, but also for a teacher. So in history, so psycholinguistic was uh, roused because of um, there is two different ideas, whether the language was acquired firstly based on the innateness or being heritated or we got it from the, our ancestor, but some other scientists believe that language is acquired from the behavior or we got it from our social interactions. So there are two different ideas there. And also the term psycholinguistic was not uh, popular from the beginning, but it was called as psychology of language in 19th century. But then the nomenclature of uh, psycholinguistics was started uh, from uh, a book which is uh, written by Jacob Kender in 1936 and the next one his student namely Nicholas Bronco written uh, wrote an article uh, with the title psycholinguistic review in 1946 then later the term uh, psycholinguistics popular uh, starting at that time well, the next is about the expert in psycholinguistics. The first is William Wundt. William Wundt is known as the father of experimental psychology and the founder of the first experimental psycholinguistics laboratory in Leipzig, Germany in 1879. Wundt claimed that there is a special field of study dealing with the link between the mind and the body. So it means that we can say that Wundt is the father of psycholinguistics and he developed the theory of speech production using sentence as the unit of analysis. And the second one, Franz Joseph Gall. He was uh, creating a theory of a phrenology. The phrenology is an idea of assigning personality types based on a physical characteristics. As an example, a condition such as hyperthelorism or the abnormal separations of origin such as the eyes being abnormally far apart, then we can mention that someone who has this situation as homosexual. So it means that there is a connection between the physical uh, conditions with someone's personality. And the next one is Carl Wernick. Carl Wernick was an influential neuropsychiatrist and dealt with all mental illness that resulted from defects of the brain physiology. So Wernick is a part of our brain which has a vital control on speech comprehensions then someone who has elations or problem in physiology of Wernicke they will have what is called as Wernicke aphasia so when someone has Wernicke aphasia it means that someone cannot comprehend or language input that comes to his mind 
The next one is Paul Broca. Paul Broca was a French physician, is most famous of work of speech research and the role of the brain plays in the speech. Uh, he made the research on uh, looking at the patients, then the patients only can mention the word tan, so that's why the, the patient is called as tan. And further, it was found that there is a problem in his uh, Broca's area, then it is called as Broca's aphasia. So, someone who suffer Broca's aphasia, they understand what someone says, but the problem is hardly the persons or the patients to produce the language that they already comprehend. So, in simple way, Broca fascia know what they want to say but can't carry it out. The next expert in psycholinguistics is Jean Piaget, was a French developmental psychologist who played an extremely influential role in how we understand development in children. That's why Piaget mentions there are four stages of cognitive development, starting from the sensory motor stage, which starts on age 0 to 2, the second is pre-operational stage, the third is concrete operational stage, and the fourth is formal operational stage, and it happens till the end of the beginning of adulthood. And the last expert that I'd like to explain is Noam Chomsky. Noam Chomsky perspective changed how scholars define language. The potential for language was universal and innate, not the product of operant conditioning. So Chomsky is a scientist that promotes a lot on the innateness of language. Chomsky mentions that there is what is called as language acquisition device or LED or in an airplane we say as a black box. The functions of the black box is to save uh, uh, important information that happens on the plane. So it means that someone like a baby can speak a simple language because in their mind they have what is called as a black box or LED. It means that the language is inherited from the ancestor or from parents to the baby. So comparing these two accounts is referred to as Skinner and Chomsky debates. So Skinner mentions that the language is acquired from behavior or from social interactions while Chomsky debates that the language is gotten from inheritance or gotten from the parents. So this is the end of our discussions in psycholinguistics class as part of introductions to English linguistics. So thank you for your attention, keep learning and see you later.